So welcome everyone. Um, this is my first module, your mostly painless guide to uh, getting started on Drupal development. My name is Joe Chelman. This is my third talk today. I, my voice has returned. I think I should be good, but um, bear with me if I get a little horsey. Um, I'm a Drupal generalist. I've been working with Drupal for uh, five or six years now. Um, got into it definitely more as a site builder and have been getting more into the development stuff as I've gone along as well as, you know, theming. So the goal here is to uh, give people who are maybe not comfortable with the idea of having to write code to do things, get a little more comfortable with that idea. Um, what, what I, basically what I'm hoping that you'll take away is that developing modules, just, I mean, just the, the simple act of creating modules and doing some basic stuff in that um, method in Drupal is not overly difficult. Uh, and we're, we're looking for a sense of empowerment, I guess is what I'm, what I'm saying here. So uh, you could also call this talk, How to Stop Worrying and Love the Code. Uh, those of you who've seen Dr. Strangelove might uh, find some meaning in that. So uh, what I'm expecting you might have coming in here is uh, a little bit of experience with PHP or with some other programming language. Um, it's, that is not absolutely necessary, but it is helpful um, because I'm going to show, you know, just a little bit of code. And so if you've never had any programming experience with any language whatsoever, uh, if there's a lot of people in here uh, who feel their eyes rolling into the back of their head or whatever at the, at the site of some of this stuff, we can, we can certainly go over some of that. But if you've had some programming experience, you should, be, you should be pretty good. And you can definitely get started writing Drupal modules without, you know, a CS degree. Um, <clears throat> so that includes just things like variables, functions, arrays, or dictionaries, if you've seen Ruby before, um, control structures like loops of various types, uh, if statements, that sort of thing. Um, if you have those things, you are well on your way. If you don't, it's not too hard to sort of bootstrap yourself into that position where you, you feel better about that. Yes? Uh, I noticed that you did not mention objects. Did you use objects? Uh, that is correct. I did not mention objects. Drupal's uh, execution model is more a procedural sort of thing. Um, there is object-oriented code, especially more in Drupal 7, but you do not need to understand uh, object-oriented programming to get started. Um, so, what is a module? The answer is, uh, like, literally, it is a, a folder or, you know, a directory uh, in your Drupal installation that holds some code. Um, it holds code that is structured in a very particular way. Uh, at its most basic, you have an info file and a module file. That's, those are the extensions. So, like, if I have a module that's called my module, uh, I'll have a folder my module, and inside that I'll have my module.info and my module.module. You could have more files. Uh, I mean, if you look at a, at a module of one of the big ones, like views, say, it is loaded with files, but it also has these two basic ones. So if you want to just create something very small to accomplish a small goal, this is all you need. It is exactly what you need and nothing more. So your .info file looks just like this. This is pretty much the bare bones of what you need. Uh, you have, and I mean, it's, it's just like this. This is all that's in there. There's no other like PHP stuff or, you know, nothing. There, you don't have to have anything else in there. Just the name, description, the version, uh, and, and the uh, core declaration both refer to what version, what major version of Drupal you are targeting your module at. So you're going to be interfacing with Drupal's uh, API uh, and I don't, I don't know if that, that means anything to people, but that's basically the, the, per, the set of programming features that Drupal offers to you as a programmer. Um, and those change from version to version, and sometimes even within uh, a single major release, you can have changes in the API. So you just need to know that, okay, this is a Drupal 6 module, this is a Drupal 7, a Drupal 8 module, whatever. Um, and you give it a version, the general structure is the same as core with a hyphen and then the version of your own module. So if you were starting from the beginning, you could just do a you know, 6 or 7.x hyphen 1.0 
or whatever you like. It can be anything you want, but that's the sort of the canonical structure. Then there's the actual module file, which is the thing that contains your PHP code. Um, so in this case, uh, it's just you know your PHP declaration at the top. Um, those of you who have uh, maybe seen some PHP before, uh, there is the beginning tag, but not the end tag, not the one with the question mark and the and the ending angle bracket. Do not include those when you when you put them. I mean, this is kind of a general uh, piece of PHP advice when you're writing when you have a file that contains only PHP, no HTML, no nothing else. Um, leave that off to save yourself some headaches. Uh, I'll just leave it at that for now. Um, but all you do is you just create that file and you stick a function in it. That's it. You, you've just written a module. Um, so the, at the very basic level, that's all that's happening. Um, it is really not a big deal. So um, why would you do this? Um, if you've been working with Drupal for a little bit, you will start to... Uh, see that there are some systems in Drupal that uh, that don't have access to other pieces. So like if you're working exclusively in the theme layer, mostly if you're writing any code, uh, you're doing it probably in a template.php file. There are some features to which you do not have access in template.php. There's actually a lot of features you don't have access to at that level of Drupal. So uh, by getting into writing modules, you gain access to all of Drupal. Um, you can do anything with it uh, as long as you go through a module. I mean, you know, there, there are some things which I, you can only do in the theming layer, but broadly speaking, uh, it's a superset of what you can do in the theming layer. You get access to everything. Um, another nice thing, if you, there are some changes that you could do in a module which are more related to theming, but it offers you the opportunity to have some changes that stay the same regardless of what theme you're using. So, you know, the, uh, the obvious case is, you know, if you're working with a, mo with a contributed module and you change your administration theme, the module will still work because it includes all, it, all the stuff it needs to work regardless of theme. So the same thing can apply to stuff that isn't necessarily administrative. Uh, and it just gives you the chance to, uh, to do that. And, you know, I suppose if you're just curious, that would also be a perfectly valid reason. So now uh, we'll run through some examples of things that I think are uh, the reasons, like the reasons that I personally started writing modules um, are, some of them are here, and so we're going to go through some of those, but there was a question first. Are you going to talk about when not to write modules? I was not planning on it. Uh, do you have uh, some notion of, uh, of why I might bring that topic up? I see. Yeah, uh, I'm not going to talk about that uh, just because. Uh, I mean, we can talk about talk about those things once, maybe once I'm done. I'm not sure if there will be time, but sure. Um, so, the examples uh, are alter hooks. I mean, it's it's all right here. Just I'm just giving you a little outline. So we're just yeah, I don't I don't need to read that to you. Uh, so the first example we're going to go over is alter hooks. This is a big one. Um, it's pretty much. Uh, the gateway drug into becoming a uh, Drupal developer, uh, at least for me, was having to start writing alter hooks. So, uh, show of hands, who knows what a hook is when I say that? Okay, quite a few people know. I'll, I'll just give you the, the quick overview. Drupal uh, Drupal customization happens through through this hook system, which is basically a set of functions with special names. So. The idea is that I can, in any system in Drupal, can create hooks, like say the node system will have hooks. That are, it's a function that's just named hook underscore something. And uh, it indicates to the rest of the Drupal system, I'm gonna go do something, or I am doing something, or I just did something. Uh, would anybody else like to influence this process? And so uh, the first example on here is hook form alter. So what that means is when Drupal is rendering a form, like your user login form or just pretty much anything with, uh, with HTML form elements, Drupal 
generally speaking, uh, a, a well-written piece of, of contributed code or pretty much all of Drupal core will say, uh, all right, I'm, I'm building this form. Now everybody else has an opportunity to mess with it. So the way you do that is through this hook form alter function. Um, you can do things like change the labels of field. Uh, well, so I, I, should, I should say that, uh, especially now that we're getting into Drupal 7, you won't always need to do a module to mess with forms. Um, the more experienced themers in the room will, will know that you can take and override .tpl uh, files to do a lot of like real basic customizations that we used to have to do only through modules. But uh, fortunately, that we're kind of moving away from that stuff. However, um, there will be situations where you'll look at the TPL file and there will be something that you can't change that you might want to change. And when that happens, hook form alter is your friend, um, or at least it's your partner. It's, the, it's, it's what you have to work with. Um, usually it'll be a friend. Hook menu alter will let you, so when I say menu, I don't just mean primary links or, uh, you know, the, the visible pieces of navigation on a Drupal site. Me the menu system in Drupal is basically, it's the, it's the menu router. It's the thing that, where you go to a Drupal path, you go to like, you know, mysite.com slash whatever's after that is hooking into the menu system. And so if I want to do something to a particular, uh, let's call it an endpoint, um, hook menu alter will let, will let you do that. And I'll, I'll give you an example if that's too abstract. Um, well, I'm going to give you an example anyway. So, you know, I don't care if, it's, if you think it's too abstract. I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, in Drupal 6, there is a hook called hook link alter, which uh, if you've ever wanted to, say, change when you have a, a node and at the end the node says read more at the end of a teaser, you want to change that. There are modules that will help you do this, but you can also change that link yourself using hook link alter. Um, in Drupal 7, that same functionality specific to a node, that like hook link alter is gone in, in Drupal 6, um, and uh, hook node view alter is basically, it, that just says, okay, I'm, a node is about to be viewed when anybody like to modify it, and you get the chance to do it there. Um, some really good ones uh, for theming are Drupal 7 exclusive, that's hook CSS alter and hook page alter. So, uh, I don't know if anybody was in here for the for the mobile themes talk uh, before, but he, there's also hook JS alter uh, related to this. So you just have the chance to alter the uh, CSS and the JavaScript that's included at any point. So if you want to remove some JavaScript files or CSS files from a particular page on your site because you don't need them or whatever, um, or you want to just I mean, you know, you just want to make a change somewhere in there, but you only want to do it in a specific place and finding, and you maybe can't do it through a template, then you look at one of these hooks and you can do that. Um, hook page alter is, it's a similar idea except it's for, you know, the rendering of an actual page. Um, let's see, actually we should probably look at an example of one of these guys. So. Let's take a look at a at some form alter stuff here. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish going through. I'm gonna I'm gonna be jumping all over the place here, but I'll I'll finish this up and then we can go and look at some code afterwards. So um, that was a a bunch of alter hooks. Though that is by no means all of them. Um, there are alter hooks everywhere um, in Drupal, but those those to me are the are some of the big ones. Uh, another thing you might get into is creating blocks in code. So, of course, you can make blocks in the Drupal user interface, um, and for custom static HTML, that is totally acceptable, nothing wrong with that, completely honorable. But there may be some times that that is not going to work for you. So some examples for that is if you have a block that, for whatever reason, uh, needs a custom setting that you can't provide through a theme, like if you're using a module like Skinner, for example, that lets you choose a bunch of different styles for presentation, you don't need to write a module to like change something like that. But if you have something where you need to present a form to offer settings to modify the look of a custom block, you will probably have to go down this road. Um, another situation is static HTML that you don't want uh, users to be able to edit. Uh, you could also, you know, 
it could be, you could make it editable if you wanted to, but I know I've had cases where it's just supposed to be a static thing, and uh, so just putting it in a module is easy. You get all the, you know, normal tracking stuff, putting it, putting it in there instead of storing it in Drupal's database. Um, another example, which you may not run into so much, but uh, there are times when views module, which creates, you know, lists of things and can provide blocks and all kinds of stuff for you, sometimes it's just like whatever, for whatever reason, you can come up with a case where views maybe isn't the right choice. Um, it's not fast enough or, or, you know, it just takes too much weird, you know, cat herding to try and make it do the right thing. So you write a, a database query that, uh, that does exactly what you want and you provide it in a module. It could happen. Um, some more examples. And then these are, these are just basically just more examples of hooks you can play with. So uh, hook comment in Drupal 6, uh, that just, that's a general hook that says, all right, something just happened with a comment. Would anybody like to do something? In Drupal 7, that's been parceled out into a series of hooks that all have names. That, so it's like hook comment underscore view, um, which gives you the chance to do something right before a comment is displayed to, uh, on the web. Um, so that you, I've used that before to create custom mail notifications or, you know, just different, different things can happen. Uh, hook node and hook user, uh, various things like that. Again, un something's going to happen with a node, something's going to happen with a user, something just did happen with one of those objects. Now I, I want to respond to that or affect it in some way. Um, hook cron. Uh, that that one is probably of all the hooks. It's probably the easiest one to write code for because there's almost nothing to do except just write function, uh, you know, my module underscore cron, and then you can do whatever you want every time cron runs in Drupal. So if you have something that needs to happen throughout the day or once a day or once a week or when, however often you've configured cron to run on your website, then on your Drupal site, then you implement hook cron, and you're done. Um, so uh, I have also, and I, I'm not necessarily proud of this, uh, I've also used a module to conditionally load uh, files in certain situations. And uh, so there's, in Drupal 6, there's a hook init. Uh, well, I, th I think it might be in Drupal 7 as well, but you don't need to use it for this, for this use case. Um, but you can, you can call uh, Drupal add JS or Drupal add CSS. In Drupal 6, there are certain situations where doing that can give you unexpected results, and putting it in hook and knit can make things a little more predictable, or at least it did for me. Um, that is definitely not necessary in Drupal 7 because you have the theme layer function template preprocess HTML, which is nice. So you don't, you don't have to go down the, the module road. You're still writing code, but at least you don't have to write a module. Um, one more thing that I've occasionally uh, experienced is needing to just store a piece of PHP that Drupal happens not to provide. Like, you know, it doesn't provide you a, a nice function for generalizing, uh, in general, capitalizing words, say. So you could write a piece of code, stick it in a module, and then you have access to it in other parts of Drupal, whether it be at other modules or, you know, if you're using uh, Display Suite, you might want to be able to use some custom stuff in a code field or, you know, whatever. Um, it, let, it gives you a place that is sensible to keep, you know, your, your weird bits of code. Um, on most of the sites that I build, I have a module that's just called site name underscore glue. Uh, and that's where I'll find, you know, you'll find things like weird form alter hooks or, uh, you know, little stashed PHP functions, just all, all this sort of thing. Um, and, uh, so if you go down this road, Lord help you, you might end up doing so something like that. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to switch over here to just look at an example of a module here, um, to give you some, some actual examples of thing of terrible things that you, or, you know, good things that you can do with a module. Uh, as I said, here is the, this this is, by the way, uh, this is Drupal 6, but the format of everything I'm going to show you is basically totally the same in Drupal 7. Um, it just so happens that I had this guy ready to go, so here, so here it is. 
Um, <clears throat> this is the info file. It's real basic. You get your name. It's just a string. You don't have to quote it. You don't have to do any any you know stuff with it. It's just the just name and then the equals and then that description and version. It's all all there, just like I told you earlier. This is the actual module file. So again, it needs to be named the same thing as uh, as your folder, which is named the same thing as your info file. It's all it's all this, you know the same deal. So the we have our opening PHP here to designate that that's really what this is. I, I have been guilty at times of forgetting to put that in and then enabling my custom module and I get, you know, I get all my actual code spit out into the page because Drupal just loads everything. Um, and so, you know, if that ever happens to you, just don't forget to include that. Um, <clears throat> so here is the uh, hook menu alter um, implementation. So the, the way that uh, if you're following Drupal's coding standards, they, it is you know, recommended that you include a comment, which is uh, just code that is not executed. Uh, it's, it's just supposed to be documentation that says what you're doing, even though, I mean, you know, it's sort of obvious, but you're saying, yes, this is really what I'm doing. And then instead of hook, you just replace it with the name of your module. So this, this one is DCLA, DCLA menu alter. And then, uh, and then you write your code. So the way you find out what this thing should look like is by going to the Drupal API site, which is api.drupal.org. And then you can, I'm going to switch to Drupal 6 here, and search for hook menu alter. And so this gives you an example of what the function should look like, so you know that that like it needs to be passed this items uh, argument and it needs to be passed by reference. Uh, you don't have to know what that means if you're not a programmer, but you just need to know that this that the form that this function must take to work as expected is just like that. So here we are. It's the same thing here. It's just the name has changed. So um, here are some things that I have done with hook menu alter. Drupal provides. Uh, you know, if you go to drupalsite.com slash node, it's your just general front page, you know, river of content. Um, you may want to turn that off uh, just to, you know, if you want to be tricky and try and hide the fact that you're using Drupal or you just don't want, uh, you, you just don't want to deal with presenting uh, your content in that way, whatever. For whatever reason, if you want to disable it, this is what you do. Uh, the items argument that's passed in here is just every single menu item that Drupal is aware of. So in this case, it, uh, and it's an, it's an array, it's an, it's an associative array, which uh, as you start getting into Drupal, you will see these everywhere. Um, <clears throat> and so this is the name of it. So what I'm doing is I want to I do something to slash node. And in this case, I want to modify its property, the access callback. Um, which is the function that is called when somebody hits slash node. So if I change this to false, that disables it. So I'm going to go back over to my little site here, and we're going to... So actually, if I hit this first... Okay, so I, I have a piece of content here, right? It looks, it looks like it's acting normal. So now what I'm going to do is jump down to my custom module, and enable it. Now I go to the same thing, and I get access denied. Um, there are different ways that you can handle this. This is a little bit Byzantine, but, um, but you know, you've disabled it. This is, this is, you've, you've just affected Drupal um, using a module. Congratulations. Um, <clears throat> so this, to find out which, it, you know, which of these things like the right form of this. For something like slash node, it's easy because it's just the word. But then you have pages like your taxon your built-in taxonomy module uh, overview pages by, you know, that take a term ID as an argument. So this happens to be the form that they come in, but how are you going to know that? Uh, so the answer is that you go back into your Drupal modules folder and you look at taxonomy module. 
Oops. All right, let me bump this up for you. Okay, so I'm going to just use my little inspector here, and I can see that. So I'm I'm using hook menu alter, right? So that means I'm modifying a module's implementation of hook menu. So what I'm looking for here is taxonomy menu. And here's all the items that it defines. And so what I want to do is find the one that I want to change, which is this one. And so here you can see here's the here's the page callback and this is this is the function that it's going to call when it when you hit this thing. And so I guess I use I guess this form works too. But um, but anyway, setting the uh, the access callback to true, and then setting the page callback to Drupal not found. Actually, I, I guess let's, let's just do this with what I've already got. So this I'm pretty sure the behavior here is not going to change, and I'll. I'll say why in a minute. Okay, the behavior has not changed, and the reason for that is another thing that you, when, you, uh, when you're writing Drupal stuff, especially when you're dealing with things like menus or forms or whatever, you will find out that you need to empty Drupal's cache. So just like your web browser has a cache that you know, saves the content of pages, Drupal has internal caches that it uses so it doesn't have to run database, the same database queries over and over again. It doesn't necessarily have to re-render certain things. Uh, but, and so in the case of something as huge as the number of menu items that are defined uh, as Drupal, as your typical Drupal site has, I mean, it's hundreds and hundreds of items uh, for everything that's you know, public facing and administrative, just everything, uh, all these menu items everywhere, you need to flush your caches. So I, uh, there are different ways to do this. I use Drush a lot of the time, but if you use admin module, uh, you can, or admin menu module, sorry, you can uh, specifically flush the menu cache. And uh, was I a liar? I, I'm probably implementing this hook wrong. So, uh, oh yeah, that's right. So let's do that again. Yeah, there we go. Thank you. So uh, yeah, now we get page not found. So you're getting just different responses to this thing. You can also do redirects and uh, you know all that sort of thing. I've also used this to disable personal contact forms. Uh, if I were to include these, um, I like to use instead of for for the def uh, the definition of custom blocks through the Dr Drupal user interface, instead of just using the built-in blocks module. I like to use another module called Boxes, uh, which gives you more programmatic control um, and makes it easier to migrate blocks from one site to another. Um, so what you can do in this case is I've, I've told Drupal that, okay, when somebody tries to go and add a block, um, instead of taking them to the normal spot that block module defines, we're going to do a Drupal go to as the uh, as the function that's called, and the place that I want to take them is the same thing, but but the version that's defined in boxes module. So you could take this and apply it to anything. You know, if, if you want some, if you want to change something from hitting one thing to hitting another, you can do it this way. Um, so that's that's an example for hook menu alter. Uh, so. Hook form alter, while it's very powerful, it does mean that you have to uh, get into understanding Drupal's form API, which uh, it's large. Uh, it has a lot of a lot of stuff. Uh, and let's, in fact, just take a quick look at it. There's a, a reference page for it on the Drupal API site. So it's this massive thing that tells you all the different kinds of form elements that Drupal defines and all the programmatic features and uh, properties that each of these kinds of items has. So uh, this, you know, when you're writing, if, if you get into the serious writing of modules, you're going to be spending a lot of time with all this stuff. But um, in the meantime, 
just know that such a thing exists. Um, and it, I mean, it's, it's long, it's kind of intimidating, but it's actually pretty decent documentation and uh, gives, you, gives you power. Uh, so, form alter is going to take a programmatically defined form and give you a chance to do stuff to it. But what you have to do is make sure that you're doing it at the right time. So you don't, you don't necessarily, I mean, presumably you're not going to want to do a single alter of every single form in exactly the same way. That would be weird. So what you do is you check what, uh, there are different ways to define this, but if you're using the general form of hook form alter, what you do is you check which form it is that you're actually editing. So um, how do you find out what that is? I'm glad you asked. The answer is... So let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna go to a node edit form. No, I'm not. Uh, this is what I this is what I want. Here we go. Okay. So let's say I want to do something to my my edit slash add form for you know for this piece of content or for for any piece of content I suppose. Um, if you're there's different ways you could do this. I'm going to use the web inspector in Safari. Um, th and so this, there's, there's the way to fi figure out what it is looking through the code. This is the way that I, I would expect um, a themer might be more comfortable with by going through the, uh, the source, basically. So, whoops. Try and make it show me this stuff. Okay, I want to inspect this area. So here is my form tag, and here's all the stuff contained therein, and here we go. Okay, so here's, here's a bunch of stuff that uh, Drupal's form API provides you, um, you know, your, all, all this, just all this stuff. It's a bunch of stuff. So the thing that, that uh, you are particularly interested in is the form ID. So you find that by finding the hidden form element that is called form ID. It has an ID, and then there's a value there. And that value, whoops, that value right there, uh, in this case, gig underscore node underscore form, uh, if I want to change this form, that's the piece that you need to include in your uh, call to uh, form alter. So what, what you do is you just, I'm, I'm using a switch because I'm working on, you know, potentially a bunch of forms but you could also use an if statement, whatever you like. Just, you need to check somehow what the ID of the form is and then do stuff. Uh, so once you know which one it is, we'll get down here and you have this form object. So this, this one, I believe, is going to be this. So uh, what I've done here is with this with this guy is I'm I'm messing with the uh, the node type form, which I'll, I will prove to you that I'm that that's really what's going on here, uh, like so. So here's all this stuff. Where's the ID? Here you go. Here's node type form. Okay, so you get a form object when this happens. So I'm gonna show you the very interesting uh, view of this form now. Okay, so what I've done in PHP here is say, okay, basically just print that object. Just print it to the screen. Uh, this is really ugly, um, but it, you know, serves my purpose. So what what I've got now is basically a PHP just dumping the variable out so you can see all the garbage that's, I mean, it's not all garbage, most of it's useful, uh, but all the stuff that's in this, note, uh, in this form object. And so pretty much all this stuff is accessible to you through the form alter uh, function. And so yada yada, boy oh boy, there's a lot of stuff here. So anyway, it's up to you to figure out what it is you actually want to do and figure out which properties you need to mess with to make those changes. Yes? Is there a specific command that dumps that out in the creating method? That yep. Yeah, if you're, if you're using Devel module, 
you can use uh, the DPR function or, you know, there's a family of, uh, of functions in Devel module that will give you something that's a lot nicer than this. But, uh, and I, I can't remember if I have Devel module installed, but this will work regardless. Um, and again, as I say, it's ugly. You definitely want to be using Devel module for this. Uh, we're just going, you know, the quick and, quick and ugly route here. So anyway, you can see that there's this, uh, this thing called comment in here. So what, basically what I wanted to do is just make sure uh, that every time I create a new node type, I wanted to make sure that the default value for, uh, for whether comments are accepted is set to false. Um, this, has the, uh, th this is not necessarily the best solution to this problem because what happens is every time I edit a node form now, it's also going to toggle it off. So I need to, you know, there's, a, there's probably a, well, there is most certainly a better way to do this. But, you know, if there was a problem, I tried to solve it, and that this, this worked for, uh, for the issue that I had at the time. Um, but always, you know, watch out for unintended consequences of the code you write. Um, so, just set that to zero, and that makes sure that it, that it's always disabled. Get rid of this horrible thing now. Um, <clears throat> so here's another example. This case, in this case, we're operating on a comment form. Okay, good. All that stuff's gone. So let's go back here and look down here. Okay. This is actually going to look a little more whoops, like what I want if I'm not logged in. So I'm just going to open a second browser here so you can see what this looks like when we're not logged in. Okay, so this has all the uh, identifying stuff. And there, uh, I just wanted to, in I wanted to change the order of some of the fields. I don't think I actually have that in my sample module, but in the case where I, I started diving into this, I wanted to change the order of some things, and uh, the client just you know, wanted the comment form to be set up in a very specific way, and there was, I, I can't remember specifically what it was, but using the comment.tpl file, I did not have deep enough access to be able to manipulate the stuff in the way that they wanted, so had to go to hook form alter to fix it. So in this case, uh, I've added this, added a little dis uh, description to the email field, and uh, the other stuff is not is not in here. But um, but this adds just a an arbitrary uh, piece of markup through form alter with the content that I wanted, and using the uh, weight attribute. You can set, uh, uh, if you've uh, worked with Drupal for very long, you start to see the, the notion of weight everywhere. That's just the, it's the ordering uh, mechanism. And it go, you can use negative numbers, you can use positive numbers, and the idea is that a negative number will float to the top, and larger numbers are heavier, and they drop to the bottom. Um, so when you're inspecting stuff and trying to figure out why something is in a particular order, look at the weights. Um, <clears throat> so that's here. And then, uh, oh right, so when, uh, usually when you have a, an anonymous user getting ready to uh, comment on something, the, the default value is filled in as anonymous. This client didn't want that, they just wanted a blank, so this little piece of code does that. Um, and then, uh, oh yeah, and it also changes the name from, I guess it's, I can't remember what Drupal initially calls it, but it's, it's name in this case. Likewise, uh, email changed the name of that, and then added a little that little thing there, and that's uh, so that's that. I mean, this is, you know, if you've never looked at Drupal's form API, this is going to be like what? But um, for for what you're doing, it's a, I mean, it's two lines of code to make a to make a change like this. Not so horrible when you're uh, having to dive below the theming layer. Okay. So uh, here's an example of hook link alter, which again is things like this. So um, if I want to just change the way that's phrased, um, there may be other ways to do it in other contributed modules, but you can definitely do it through link alter. And you can, so let, let's say I, I want to, I don't want that comment add uh, link to be there anymore. In fact, yeah, it's. It's not a good example because it's not there anyway. Okay, yep, so I'm going to get rid of the new comments link. 
So here, here it is. Now, if I refresh this, it goes away. So <clears throat> with uh, now, this is not necessarily going to going to help you if you're developing on Drupal seven. But uh, if you want to know which link, uh, like what the name of the link is and how to how to get rid of it, you just look at the first class in the list element here. So um, so this this one that's still left is comments comment comment comments, but the one that I wanted to get rid of had comment underscore new underscore comments. So you just use a PHP unset and it goes away. Um, <clears throat> so I said that hook cron is super easy to implement. I mean, granted, this is not something that you may find yourself doing so much, but it's just a function. It doesn't take any arguments or anything, and you just stick something in there that you want to happen every time cron runs. So in this case, I'm using Drupal's watchdog function to just basically trump it again. Drupal tells you when cron runs, um, but just doing it again, because you can. Um, <clears throat> but that's, that's it. I mean, if you, if you need to do something periodically, that's all you have to do. Not, not so bad. And then here's an example of a, just a random function that uh, I've named the same way. You don't have to do this, but it's probably a good idea because Drupal, because of Drupal's method of using uh, functions with special names. It's a good idea just to follow this uh, notion of namespacing and just make sure that your uh, functions are named something that's consistent. Uh, it'll also potentially help you trace back wherever the thing was defined if you happen to break something. So, uh, so yeah, this is just a, a function that, that just does some word capitalization uh, using, using some simple rules. And now I have that available if I want to use it in display suite or, you know, whatever. Um, so if I, this, I mean, this is how many lines of code? This is, this is like 87 lines um, in, or, oh, okay, it's 108 lines in here with a whole bunch of comments that aren't doing anything. But uh, you could have a module that's, you know, no longer than this that actually does something useful. So, um, so once again, just want to reiterate that uh, this is this is well within uh, this is well within everybody's grasp. I think um, that's not to say that it's you know super easy, and that I'm I'm certainly not diminishing the uh, considerable talents that it takes to be a good programmer and all, all that sort of thing. Um, but uh, just to get started and just to make some changes that uh, to accomplish a goal is something that I don't think anybody should uh, feel intimidated by. Um, okay, so a couple of final things here. Uh, you'll hear this uh, often. Don't hack core. Uh, resist the temptation to go into uh, stuff that's outside your your sites folder and start, you know, editing modules and uh, or any any built-in piece of of uh, Drupal code. Um, it is very, very rare that there's uh, something in Drupal that cannot be altered through an alter hook or can, that doesn't provide you know, some kind of way for you to make a change that, uh, in your own code so you, you don't have to mess with, uh, with core. Um, if, you, if you all have seen uh, Ashuk around here, he uh, has a blog post that talks about a method by which you actually, not hack core exactly, but if something about core is not meeting your needs and you're uh, and you want to actually uh, do something there there are ways that you can do that safely but generally speaking don't go down that road unless you absolutely have to and most of the time you really won't um, places that you can inspect the uh, Drupal API of course there's api.drupal.org which covers Drupal core um, but there are a couple of other options that I uh, use frequently drupalcontrib.org is a lot like uh, the Drupal API site, it runs the same API module, which uh, just which is what generates api.drupal.org, but it includes a bunch of contributed modules as well. So just like you can search for things uh, that are in core, you can, you can get a, a much greater uh, breadth of, uh, of you know, APIs that, that other modules provide you. And likewise, api.lullabot.com, it's from, uh, from the big Drupal shop, Lullabot. It's a nice speedy site. Uh, examples module, if you go to drupal.org slash project slash examples, 
Uh, that's available for Drupal 6 and Drupal 7, and it's a copiously documented uh, series of modules that will tell you if you want to, you know, if you want to write a block module, it includes a, an example for that that has just really good documentation and can really help you uh, figure that stuff out. Any t I recommend to anybody who has the remotest interest in getting into Drupal development to just download examples module and just look through the code. Um, it's very helpful. Uh, and then it, I mentioned this before, if you make a change in your code and it seems not to do anything, empty your cache. Um, you can do that through admin module, through the performance page, through Drush, but just, you know, clear the cache. And then finally, uh, don't be shy about asking for help. Um, this is a community. Uh, we are all interested in the sharing of knowledge and uh, like to help each other out. And, uh, you know, certainly all of us need help at one time or another. So uh, don't be shy. And uh, that, as they say, is about it. Oh, yeah. Okay, I got a couple more things here. Uh, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of books out there, obviously. Uh, I personally have used... For Drupal 7, the pro, uh, what's it called? Drupal uh, module development, uh, which is on APRESS, I think. Um, and then for, there's also, the book is called Pro Drupal Development. And there are editions for uh, Drupal 5, 6, and 7. That's the first, second, third editions of that book. Um, those are good. Um, there are many others. Uh, there are, there's the, API reference, just a link here, don't copy that down, grab the slides later if you want. Um, there's also a hooks reference page that lists every hook in uh, Drupal core, so that's good. And then here uh, at Drupal Camp, there are a few more talks that, that could be useful. There's understanding hooks, uh, which is tomorrow. Uh, Form API 101, I don't remember when that one's happening, and I think the, the advanced theming uh, I can't, sp I can't remember when that's happening, and they, I guess the schedule's changing anyway, but those are a couple more places where you could go and look into some stuff that uh, will help you, you know, feel, uh, feel more empowered about uh, writing some code for Drupal. So I, I seriously really think, yep, okay, that's really it now. Um, any more questions? Yes? Yeah, um, you said Uh, I'm not sure what you mean. Th things from PHP that would conflict uh, with Drupal? Example, string low to lower or green R, those are future functions. Yep. Um, let's say new features from PHP 5.3 or something like that. Um, would that be a conflict with Drupal? Which ones conflict? I mean, Drupal is written in PHP, so it... it no, I, I know you know. <laughs> uh, I'm not... I guess I'm not quite sure... I, I don't think I understand the question enough to really be able to answer that. Um, Drupal does, I, I mean, the, the closest thing I can, I can give you to something like that is Drupal, uh, there are some built-in PHP functions that uh, Drupal finds a little insufficient and so will expand upon, but uh, off the top of my head, I don't think I have any good examples of that, except maybe the, uh, I can't remember if PHP has a built-in truncate function, but there's a, there's a, a UTF-8 safe truncate function that's built into Drupal. Uh, the IRC channels, I mean, just pound Drupal is the general one. Uh, and for LA Drupal, I th I'm pretty sure the IRC channel is the only thing left that's pound Drupal LA. Does anybody, any IRC savvy people here remember that? I can never remember. But if you, uh, if you look at the, uh, at the groups.drupal.org slash LA site, the IRC channels for the, for the local stuff are mentioned on there. But, you know, pound Drupal is the, is the one for, uh, for Drupal at large. Yes? When you implement the hook for a form, mm -hmm. every time the form is loaded, it's going to look at it. Right. So you have to really understand the form API to do a good job of it because obviously it's being run a lot of times. Right. Yeah, so what the, the preferred way um, of, uh, of accessing forms uh, there's another example. Uh, if you if you look at the at the at hook form alter in the documentation, it will also mention that mention that there's a hook form underscore form ID underscore alter. So you, you can specifically, as of Drupal six and of course in Drupal seven, you can target a specific form in the function call. Um, I don't 
I don't really I don't know how serious the performance implications are of using the generalized one as opposed to the specific one, uh, but but that it's certainly in terms of code cleanliness, uh, calling the specific one is is nicer. Yeah. Uh, when you say an app, what what uh, sort of app do you mean? Application, like an app, speech, the application. Uh, if I have the second part of is if I have an already existing application and another one like Java, mm -hmm. is there a way to uh, use it and within these? Okay, so the answer to the first question about uh, whether you can write a web application with Drupal, the answer is a resounding yes. Um, you definitely can. Uh, Does this set up the rules by writing modules? Yes. Yep. You you would uh, you would do you would do it through that um, through that method. The, there's uh, I I can't remember if there's a talk about this uh, at this camp, but there there is the, especially as we move forward to Drupal eight, um, the Drupal is certainly the by far I think the largest use case for Drupal is as a content management system. But you don't actually have to use Drupal that way. Um, Drupal has, you know, this very yeah, well documented. Yeah. I, so I guess what I'm saying is, like, Drupal can also be treated as a PHP framework that doesn't necessarily even have to be used on the web. I mean, that's it's sort of what it's uh, what it's designed for. But as far as a web application goes, most definitely, like, give yeah, give Drupal a serious look. Yep. Yeah. The way the way you would go about it is by developing modules. Um, and, uh, if the Drupal does provide mechanisms that let you tie in to other services, uh, whether it's through modules or whatever, I mean, if you want to interact from Drupal with your, your Tomcat um, application or whatever it is, you can do that depending on what you want to do. But um, Drupal is written in PHP. It cannot, I mean, of course, it can't run Java code, um, but, uh, but you can interface to other things from Drupal, most definitely. So is that too much of the game? Yes, yep. Uh, pretty much anything you want to do programmatically in Drupal, writing a module is the way to do it. And then uh, if, you, if you want to have a notion of how to get started with that, I can, I can talk to you a little more about that. Um, anybody else? Okay. Well, thank you for coming. Enjoy the rest of your day.